Welcome back, I am John P. In this video, we're gonna be talking about three watch brands that are in trouble. Now, they didn't necessarily do anything bad, and certainly I'm not gonna be talking about any negative qualities of the watches because all three of these watch brands, in my opinion, make some really great, somewhat, if not certainly approachable, Swiss watches. They're all watches we've had in the door at delraywatch.com where we buy, sell, trade watches, and I have no complaints in terms of the quality, but instead, I'm gonna be talking about why these watches are likely to fail because of the value they deliver, as well as a couple of other uh, key things that I think it's important for us to keep in mind as watch enthusiasts and re uh, be reminded of uh, when we're talking about some of the companies that do uh, control and hold these brands. So I'm gonna share with you some insights uh, on these three brands. Before we do that, guys, please do not forget to check out delraywatch.com where we just more than doubled our inventory. Uh, we feel so strongly about the watch market here and we've been just adding more and more watches and amassing more watches uh, soon to be posted as well. So now's the time I think to take advantage of this because we're bringing them in and if you've been on the fence or waiting to kind of find a, a great deal, I think now's a really great time to do so. So the first brand we're gonna be talking about is Rado. Now, if you're familiar with Rado, you know about probably the Rado Captain Cook. Now, the Captain Cook is a dive watch and it's developed a bit of a cult following in its own, but Rado has been around for so much longer, right? Nearly a hundred years at this point in different forms and shapes, uh, essentially. But Rado has developed a name for itself in this category and they've been trying to develop a name for, a name for themselves in kind of the ceramic watch, very ultra light watch category. But interestingly enough, I think Rado is in big trouble because of the way that they're pricing their watches and the way that I think they're alienating collectors, specifically US collectors. Now the Captain Cook is kind of an anomaly in the product catalog because people seem to really like it. And I think if you look at it in a vacuum, right, you kind of put on the, the blinders and just look at that watch, uh, you know, Captain Cook, let's say in stainless steel for maybe 22, 2300 US dollars retail, not too bad, you know, nothing out of the question. The specs, you know, they really work. But when we start comparing Rado's watches to the other watches that the Swatch Group is offering from their sister brands, right, the brands that are produced in the exact same factories with the exact same movements, the Powermatic movements, which by the way, Rado does not tell you. You go to their website, they don't tell you that they're using the same movement that they're using in a $400 Tissot watch in that $3,000, $4,000, uh, ceramic case dive watch. They don't tell you that. They call it something else and they're very misleading about the movement. They tell you all the other specs, but it's very clear and obvious that when you pop it open or you look, they're using the Powermatic movement. Now, I have nothing bad to say about the Powermatic movement, uh, which is predominantly in Tissot, but they're using it across the board in Swatch Group and they're rolling it out to kind of take over the ETA, uh, the old ETA, like 2892s or the 2824s, uh, because those Patents did expire, so other companies started knocking them off, like STP and, and even Siegel uh, out of China. Uh, but nonetheless, you have watches that are, let's say, a dress watch uh, with kind of a turn dial pattern selling at Tissot for, let's say, $500, and the same watch over at Rado for, uh, you know, north of 1000 Now, look at a dive watch at Tissot for about 1000 Look at a dive watch at, um, you know, another one of the uh, sister brands or companies owned by Swatch, you have the Hamilton dive watch, and then you look at that and Rado wants to charge 2,500 for about the same specs, right? This is essentially the same watch, different style, but all the specs are the same and they're made in the same place. And so I think Rado is kind of setting themselves up for being pigeonholed into this weird part of the market where they rely solely on the sales of the Captain Cook line and having to keep coming out with uh, you know, new materials, right? Like ceramic is ceramic. Okay, they, they put a little bit of metal in there and now it's different. They're gonna have to keep doing that and chasing themselves over and over to try to attract buyers to the watches. And in the past, I, don't, I haven't really seen that been successful. We're gonna talk about another brand here in just a second that is kind of doing the same thing. But I think for half of the price from the other brands that are out there, you get the same watch essentially. It doesn't make sense. I think Rado has to lower the price. And I think the reason they have to do this is because Rado is very popular in the jewelry stores like uh, Jay or Jared rather. I don't, I don't know those jewelry stores, right? I don't buy these types of jewelry, but you know, you have uh, Jared and K Jewelers 
and they have to they have to have very high markups for it to work for their business model. And Rado is a popular brand in those types of stores, so I think that's probably why they have to price it so high. But nonetheless, I think it's going to hurt the brand long term. But probably someone is running the brand that is very focused on the sales here and today, and that's just the reality of publicly traded companies a lot of the time. It's hey, they're ending out their tenure. They want to end on a high note. Pass it off to someone else. They can revitalize the brand at a later date. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what I think. Let me know what you think about the Rado watches in the comments below. Now, another brand we're going to be looking at is Roger Dubuis, and this is really sad to see Roger Dubuis go in this direction because Roger Dubuis was such a phenomenal Geneva Seal movement watch brand. Right? You had a guy named Carlos Diaz who, in the '90s, partnered up with this watchmaker that essentially created the、uh, You know the buy retro perpetual calendar movement, which was even used in some of the Harry Winston watches that won a lot of awards. So they started using it in their own, and they had the sympathy line, they had the homage line, and these two lines were phenomenal. Geneva Seal, highly decorated, phenomenal.、Uh, you know, truly high craftsmanship, classic watches. But as time went on. The businessman behind the operation, Carlos Diaz, started pushing out the watchmaker. The watchmaker kind of just went with it. I'm sure he was busy trying to come up with the next complication. And then time went on. He got pushed out. The company got sold, bounced around hands, and Car- Carlos Diaz stayed with the company, kept pushing on it. And then they just kept coming out with bigger, more flamboyant watches. They, the, you know, some of the watch models are even called, you know, like much, much more, or you know, bigger, or more this and more that.、Um, And that's kind of sad because the watches that were produced in the early days of Roger Dubuis are some of the most coveted watches that exist. There's maybe a handful of them out there on the market from the homage line that you can even find at astronomical prices,、uh, as well as the Sympathy line is a design that no one has really even dared to copy, with the exception of Longines, who has a very rare, obscure reference, and even that has gr- just exploded in. Price because of the way that collectors really do admire Roger Dubuis and what、uh, he did for the brand. But today, Roger Dubuis sells watches. A couple of them are sixty thousand dollar retail price, but the bulk of them are over a hundred thousand dollars. They're all these kind of composite or these plastic type or resin cases, very large size, like sixty millimeters. Think like that, but certainly forty seven, forty eight, very large Panerai esque plus size cases. Uh, with these bright colors and the, you know, trying to associate themselves with Formula One, and basically trying to say, "Hey, we're Richard Meal too." You know, they're showing up to the Formula One race with a hundred thousand dollar watch, saying, "Oh, hey, we're Richard Meal. Someone buy us." But they're not. They're Roger Dubuis, and that's not what Roger Dubuis should be. And I've heard from those kind of, you know, in the、uh, It's、kind of circling the brand, Roger Boy. I won't say exactly in what way, but you know those that are kind of working in tandem with the brand, saying you know these are hurting very bad. These watches are really not selling. So I think it's a shame to see you know Richemont do that with the Roger Boy brand. I think if they come back out with the true sympathy case, I think if they come back out with the homage line, it'll be a knockout, no brainer. Watch collectors will go crazy. Every blog, the Hodinkees, all these guys that write all day online, they'll go crazy about it. And every collector will want one because right now I don't know anyone that wants a modern Roger Dubuis. Let me know what you think. Comments below. Now, last we are going to be talking about Ebel. Ebel is another watch brand that had its heyday. Right, think in the 1990s, Ebel was a hot brand. Celebrities were wearing Ebel, and even in the Sopranos, they have a couple of references to the Ebel watches. I got Ebel watches too. Earrings. Ebel made a watch people liked. I even owned an Ebel、uh, El Primero Zenith El Primero driven chronograph watch for a while, and I thought with this sport wave、uh, bracelet that it had, it was just such a comfortable wear of a watch. I really liked it. Now the Movada Group owns Ebel, and before they owned it, it exchanged a couple of hands, much like some of the other stories, unfortunate stories of demise in the watch industry. Tried a few things, and now they're trying to make the watch come back again. But 
They're selling a lot of quartz, predominantly quartz. They're selling a lot of ladies' watches, which, okay, fine, but a lot of ladies are wearing men's watches today. So they're selling these very flashy, small feminine quartz watches, but I don't see that really doing well. You know, a bit of a larger watch is more popular. People kind of like it. So I'm not sure where the Movado Group wants to point Ebel. It seems like it's very confused at this point. And I think if they come back out with that original, uh, you know, the original Ebel Sportwave sporting watch, come out with it, try to get some El Primero movements, do what you have to do. I think once again, it'd be unbelievable, no brainer. Collectors will go crazy, the forums, the YouTubes, all the stuff, people will love it and want it, but I don't think they'll know because they won't be watching this video because they don't keep up with modern times. And I know this because look at what else Movado has, right? You had the Movado watches, uh, you know, like the, the sea diving chronographs that they try to revitalize for about $4,000 in the last two years. And they decided to make it in this large chunky format 44 millimeters or 43 and a half millimeters. And that's just not what's going to draw in the collector that's looking for a heritage piece, right? It needs to be kind of true to the original. I'm not sure where this will end up, but I don't think it will go where they want it to. And it's not going to go where I want it to. And that's where it once was that nostalgia part of watches. I love to see it when brands pull this off. Longines doing a great job at it. So I think if they follow the playbook there, we'll see some good things coming out of these three brands that we just talked about today. Do you guys have any opinions on these three brands, the Roger de Bouille, uh, as well as Rado or Ebel? I know I was pretty tough on Rado there, but I think it is truly deceptive when a brand can't just tell you what movement's in the watch because we all wanna know, we're watch collectors, we watch these things, people wanna know what engine is in their car sometimes. Guys, please do not forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. We'll see you next time. You've been chatting with John Pete.